apologize for that uh, short break. We're back, of course, to continue these discussions. We would have to very likely reschedule the uh, conversation with the Anambra State Police Public Relations Officer, who is currently on site at one of the crime scenes in Newi. Uh, that, of course, we were meant to be discussing. Very likely we'll bring that conversation up tomorrow so we can get, uh, you know, a, a very, very robust, you know, conversation with the police public relations officer in Anambra State. Uh, but Boss India Raikbe has joined us now via Zoom. Uh, good morning once again. Good morning again. I think that is true. It's difficult to look at again. Okay. Um, now, so let's continue the conversation and let's move, you know, closer to, um, um, well, still in Anambra. Let's go to Newi now, where, of course, there were reports that the DSS facility and FRSC um, um, uh, office were both attacked and set ablaze. There's still no com uh, confirmation about um, casualties, if, if any, or how many they are. Uh, they are. Um, but this, once again, is you know, just pure evidence of how deadly these persons are and how weakened the security agencies in the southeast are currently how is this not you know shouldn't the whole of the southeast currently see that they are in danger well the whole of the southeast have seen that they are in danger since now they start saying they are in danger today they've seen that they are in danger for a very long time they've seen that they are in danger for a very long time so they know they are in danger you understand me? So if you say the South Seas, you see that they are in danger. That the South is already seeing themselves in danger. So I don't think that's what we should be looking at. They know they are in danger already. They know they are in danger already. Glucose. They know they are in danger already. So uh, what we should be looking at right now is uh, how do the South East move forward in a secure environment? That's what I think we should be looking at. How do the South East move forward in a secure environment? The South East knows they are in danger. Now, how do they cut out of this danger? It's what we should be addressing. You understand me? Now, you are saying that they are not only attacking uh, police uh, commissions or NSCDC as we know to be. They have proceeded to attack a very important intelligence unit of the government, which is the Department of State Service. Now, this attack has proceeded to their offices so, to attack their facilities. So, it's not, it's not about this again. How do the people in that region live safely? I'm talking about safely. How do they live safely and secure? What measures are the government going to put in place to secure their citizens they sworn by oath to protect? And who are the citizens the government wants to protect in the first place? Does the government even know these people? That's on that thing. Does the government even know these people? That's what we should be talking. Do they know who they want to protect and who they are supposed to arrest? So these are the things we should be looking at. So I think the government should go back to a drawing board, sit down, and properly construct an idea that will help them to protect the Southeast now that it is just starting. Number one is this, I repeat. Every minister from the southeast that is appointed by this administration of President Muhammad Buhari should be redeployed back home. The minister of labor and productivity, I think, uh, was a senator, was a governor, Ngige. Mr. Ngige should be deployed back to Anambra State to go and solve this challenge for his people. He should be the middleman between the government and the people of Anambra because he has an appointment from the president. Not only him, every other Igbo appointed minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Uyema, those people should be deployed back home to their respective localities. What, what, what kind of conversations... Mr. Raipe, what type of conversations would you say that they should be having with whoever it is that is willing to listen to them um, in the ranks of the IPOB and these criminal elements? Whether it is IPOB or whether it is criminal elements, these people are politicians from that state. They are, they are very big. They have control of most of the youths. Else, how did they get the votes? Is it not the youth that voted for them? And they should go back to these people and give them their votes. That is their job. Whatever position, whether you are elected or appointed, you are appointed because you come from a part of this country. So they should go back to that part they come from. 
where they have a lot of influence. And now, you apply their influence on behalf of the federal government that has appointed them. They come to men between the federal government and these places where you come from. You are a federal body by appointment and an indigenous by death or whatsoever means. So that is what I expect the federal government to do. We deploy every minister, beginning from Minister of Labor Productivity. We deploy him now back to his community. Let him go back to Anambra State. The Minister of Labor and Minister Miguel the Minister, he go back to Anambra State and see how to sort out this problem. The, the, the minister has a strong hold, not only him, every federal government appointee, especially I'm marking on the ministers because they have more federal uh, relationship to the presidency directs, they, they have more federal influence, you know, even much more than the senator in terms of the federal executive. They are the ones in the federal executive. They and every other person that is given an appointment at the federal level that is recognized by the president, that has access to the president from the evil speaking region, should be redeployed back to his locality to go and see how we can come up with solutions to solve this problem. Because I think the truth, the police are lost. Now they are attacking VSS. Of course, we, we, we know that uh, we have heard stories. So of these boys, even if you, you go in force with them and you are shooting at them, you might not just penetrate. Your, 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 your ammunition might just come to loss before them. So at this point, we need people from there who share dual, dual uh, interests. And these ministers share dual interests. By appointment, they share the interests of the federal government in Nigeria. Then by being citizens of this locality, they share the interests and the well-being of these people. So you see, they are the right people now to be sent back to these places to discuss. So that when they go, they know they're able to make phone calls so that can call people, that can call people, that can call people, that can call people. They know how to get messages across. They know how to talk. All of them should be sent back. There are some other influential words like uh, former governor of Abia State, minister and uh, senator, uh, Audrey Zotalo. Audrey Zotalo can be sent also to Abia State. He has a huge follower in Abia State. Every one of them should be sent back home to begin to discuss with their people and then come up with a, so a workable solution to the federal government. This way we will minimize uh, uh, civilian casualties. This way, we will be able to pinpoint proper solution that is lasting, coming from the people accepted by the federal government through their representatives, such as ministers, as I've mentioned now. That is the best way to leave this at the ball. If you leave it for the policeman alone to fight, I am not even sure you can fight. If you leave it even for the military, I am not even sure the military can do it. What have the military done in the north, where, where they left it for them? The police, through uh, VIG Wakama, handed over the battle flag to the police in the north. Till today, have they been able to stop Boko Haram? Instead, why they are there, we are hearing of more killings and more disease coming up, ex men are coming up, bandits are coming up. The military has not been able to stop them in the north. So, what makes you think they can do anything in the south? That is one. Two, the military involvement here will only be a violation of several innocent people's rights, especially women and children. Their rights will be violated. So, you see, so these are the things we're looking at. So the government cannot say they want to use force on them. It will not work. The government should use intelligence. And this intelligence should be used properly. But if the government really wants to achieve results, they should redeploy every serving senior government appointee at federal level. And then the president should discuss with those that are within his political kingdom, within his political place. I'm talking of those in the same party with him, especially in states where they have stronghold like now, currently they are in the Imo state, and Imo state is having these issues. So they should be deployed, talk to them, to go to the grassroots, that is what it is, fine offices, go to back to the grassroots, and see how to, to, to discuss with the people and come up with a change. Okay, so, uh, I, I, I don't is there any... for anything, but to to me is, if, 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 this country, if this country finally gets divided, it which I, I do not pray for this country to be divided, sincerely speaking. I love Nigeria. But example, I'm just giving an example. Take for instance, if this country finally gets divided, once the current minister of uh, labor and interior, will, will he still remain in, in the Nigeria? Will he not come back to whatever place that it was divided and, and his environment falls into and his state falls into? Is that not where he will come back? So why not him now being deployed now that nothing has happened so that he can run and show nothing happens? This is how government works. Right. This is what um, we've done with Jonathan. And that's why right, the let, let's... was still down. Yeah, let's wrap it up with. Yeah, let's wrap it up with you know your thoughts on what you feel the people of the southeast is there any role that they can play at a time like this uh, because they are the ones being affected you know in certain parts of the southeast today's Monday they will be sitting at home 
businesses are being affected, lives are being affected. Is there any role that these persons in the Southeast can also play to salvage um, what they call home? Yes. These persons in the Southeast, I have told you about them. They are the minister. They are there. They are the people that should play the role. But well, for those that are home, for Mama Nkichi, Uncle Emeka, and Chinyere, and uh, Brother Chibuso, the role that these people can play is very simple. Number one, whenever they receive at home, it does not affect the North. The North are doing that. It does not even affect the South South. We are doing our thing here in River State. It does not even affect Lagos. So Nigeria is moving forward. It is only the evil man who we all know that his major source of livelihood is business that is being affected. You understand me? So it is causing more harm to them than good, since it is not the whole Nigeria that is sitting at home. What I want to advise is that for the localities, when these politicians from Abuja come down and they are ready to make peace, then whatever the local people are doing will make sense. But however, I like to advise the local people to do this. The women are the major class that can play a role. Mothers precisely, widows, women, they should be the ones now. Whatever it is, if they like what is going on, they can sit down, no problem. But if they don't like what is going on, they should now come peacefully, reach out to this, their children, the ones they can reach out to, and begin to give them reasons why these places must be peaceful. That is for the ones that have been perpetrated by the internal people in this eastern region. I don't want to say any name because I have not seen anybody doing anything. All so right. for the ones that have been perpetrated by the people in the internal, internally in the southeast region, mothers, widows should step up and see how to begin to make calls, if possible, come out. They have a way to come out. They are women. They have done it before. The Atta Women Riot of the 1921 was part of what led to our independence. So I think these women from the Igbo, Igbo tribe, they are very influential when they are ready. So we should do for to encourage the women. If they don't like what is going on, they should speak out for it, but not against their children, but they should turn their children down. That's what I want to advance. By so doing, we should agree. push direction. I think that is what I would like. At this point, mothers are very important. Mothers right. are very, very important. Boston, they are right, we would have to wrap up here. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time this morning on phone and via Zoom also. Um, we always love to speak with you and hear your perspective on these issues. We wish you a very interesting week ahead. Uh, looking forward to talking to you again. All right, and this is where we wrap up the conversations uh, this morning on The Breakfast. It's mostly being in the southeast and getting to understand what exactly is going on over there and what must be done. We'll have a rescheduled conversation with the police public relations officer in Anambra State uh, to get some clarity of what exactly happened over the weekend and what is currently being done to secure the southeast. If you miss out on any of these conversations, remember uh, to catch up on our social media platforms. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. I am Osao Gie of Bon. Have a great Monday.